Um, we saw um, uh, a previous presentation on our smart ecosystem. I'm going to try to deep down a little bit, and I saw that the autonomous uh, was a, a hot topic. So let's see where we are. Now, the whole purpose of why we are uh, around here uh, in the, that little technology shop of Vertula is to help all of us to move into something better. Uh, and uh, are we good today? Anyone in this room that has a, a ship owner or a ship manager that has an EBIT of 5% or more? 5% uh, profit. Now, Cuninagel, 30. Dubai ports, 30. Why, why don't we make money? <laughs> we need to study. Uh, we need to do a lot of things. Um, this is a picture of Fifth Avenue, 1900, Easter morning. There are horses that draw carts, and there is a single car in that picture. Then, in 1903, there are people who want to discuss whether to invest in this Ford Company thing. No, no, that's just, that's just a fashion thing. Won't work. No, no, no. It's just a um, modern. And this is the same street, 1913. Can anybody see a horse? There is one over there. There is one there, if you're good at looking. Um, point of this, of course, is that if we're the horse owner, we might, might, might be in trouble. But if you're a cargo shipper, if you're a charterer, if you are a, a person of public society, you know why uh, they wanted more uh, cars? There was a pollution problem. The horse shit was a problem. So they thought, but this is, I mean, the, the cars, they just emit this beautiful nothing. Good, right? I, um, I used to be on your side of the table when we sell and buy stuff. So I used to be uh, first uh, 15 years on the ships, uh, and then 15 years in different uh, ship management companies. And now I joined this uh, orange chair company. I really like how we make our sponsorship. Every chair is orange in my tie, and even the bathrooms, right? Think of us at every given second. When I started two years ago, I tried to kind of plot what's going to happen in the next thing. And I even drew and thought about two progressive things. The first one is, how can we combine technologies that already exist to create better products? And the other one was, how can we really think outside the box and innovate things? And if we do that, we come out to the point that hybrid ships, a logical step, will come. Uh, digitalization, absolutely, both the asset itself and the uh, uh, cargoes we move. Remote operation, yep. Uh, and in the thinking outside the box, well, the control element of parking a vessel, the final uh, 20 meter, is a skill, it's an art. Uh, there's some science in it, but mostly being a captain, I think it's an art and nobody else can do it. Um, uh, from there, uh, full route A to B, uh, full hybrid ship, which is also an oxymoron. Uh, what I'm saying is a ship without moving parts, without uh, a lot of internal combustion engine things. And eventually an autonomous ship. And amazingly, now we're here. The green boxes have been completed already. What we're missing is a uh, a ship propulsion item that doesn't have a lot of moving parts and, and requires complicated engineering and liquids and, and management. And we need a fully compliant coal rig uh, navigation system that can uh, detect everything and separate it from uh, uh, dangerous and non-dangerous and, and understand visibility rules and stuff. Because the, the rule of everything is this. We always needed people on board. As soon as we wanted to hollow out a log and move across the ocean, the first guy we put on board, we call him the captain. And today, if we put a single person on a marine body, immediately infrastructure climbs in. We need first aid, we need abandoned ship, and we need firefighting for, this, for, for the safety of this person, but also rest and recreation and a nutritious meal if you're going to stay more than three hours, right? So we added people, somebody to take care of the cargo, uh, somebody to, to do extended navigation, uh, somebody to systemize the nutritious uh, meals, 
And, and in the last hundred years, somebody we called an engineer who made sure that we didn't need to use the canvas propulsion. Now, using my previous graph, we can see that uh, when it comes to uh, engine department, we are close to getting, at least for short runs, uh, electric propulsion with basically very few moving parts. Uh, we have demonstration of both uh, auto route and uh, assisted uh, autonomous uh, collision avoidance. Uh, deck department, really, cargo handling. I mean, uh, why did the ship lose uh, all this? Uh, because of stacking height and lashing bars. Whereas ships still, uh, some of them are fully uh, cell guided, they don't lose containers ever in the North Atlantic route. Uh, and uh, the captain, again, uh, do we actually need him for, for the purpose of just sitting there? Not really. And now we have a cook with no guests, so let's send him ashore as well. And again, a significant change is that all the infrastructure of safety uh, of the humans disappear. Piracy, not a problem, because they used to take the crew hostage or steal their watches and money. Uh, fire, it's not hard to fight a fire without humans on board. In the engine room, you can keep it continuously flooded with CO2 and only feed air, breathing air to the engine. So we, we are really thinking inside the box when we think it's hard without humans. So potentially, we could see a future with this. Uh, if these guys come around, what changes? Well, the first part is they won't be this big because this big kind of in, uh, intense and in internal combustion and which I just ruled out for uh, unmanned. If we wanna have these guys compete, one of the things is the crew cost and the asset cost of keeping the crew there. For the largest ship, the bull carriers and the crude oil carriers and stuff, forget it. You, if you look at your OPEC sheet, crew cost is a 5%, 10% deal. You wouldn't care. They're much cheaper to be on board because you need a good propulsion plant. If we go to medium size, crew cost starts to become a concern, but there is no other way of doing business. When we come to the really small ones, I was looking down here at the port. There are no small commercial vessels other than people transporters. It's impossible. It doesn't pay back. The 10 metric ton thing rolls on rubber wheels. We got to take that back. There is an entire shipping segment that I actually disappeared, uh, where labor cost is high. It's just gone. So this is actually an opportunity for a shipping cluster to take this business back rather than seeing it as a threat. Autonomous ships might get you the domestic services of the Greek islands serviced uh, in a much more efficient way. Today you have to wait to get all your stuff to a full truck or a full thing and then go once a day to the islands. Uh, same goes for batteries. Really good for short trips. Uh, after 24 hours, mm, you, you're going to have to have a hybrid plant. And over 24 hours, again, forget it. As long as we don't have a new battery technology, we won't be able to do it. So the sum of that is this. Uh, these guys will win when there is a high cost of labor in proportion. Uh, they will win if the trips are short, uh, suitable for batteries and fuel. Uh, if the thing is small, because this uh, ship that lost all these containers, were all of them destined for Netherlands? We send so much stuff passing other ports where they're not supposed to be. The economy of scale, we're good, but to them, not interesting. Dirty, dangerous, demeaning, me demeaning meaning boring, uh, they're going to win. Firefighting, oil re recovery, all of that, they're there. And the point to point send the uh, container exactly to where, from where it starts to where it ends. That's something you can do. And in our smart marine ecosystem, 50,000 ships out there have something virtual on it. We want to help you to win rubber wheel, iron wheel, and air winged. We want to help you take the business back rather than trying to say that we're going to build the new technologies. This is for companies who don't have partners and uh, uh, customers today. So with that, uh, you will also benefit from the same exact technologies. Um, 
When we do the hybridization, the fuel saving are for everyone. If you have short trips, high load variation, tugs, uh, short li line ferries, hybridization can really save you money, especially if fuel prices double or triple. Um, the auto route that we are having now, the Folge von Jusoe, it can really help the boring ferry operator who goes front and back, forward, back, forward, back. We can have precision, we can have repeatability, we can have insurance and everyone else uh, equipment where all of that goes down. Remote operations for things like offshore where they need a deeper operator one day, one day of the week. Easily we can back up the onboard DP operator with a second one shore based. Uh, when it comes to autonomous, assisted autonomy, same thing. We had a, 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 a collision in the, between Corsica and mainland of a ship was at anchor and another one T-boning it with a captain on the bridge. Why? Why didn't my car take, avoid uh, small children in the city? Why didn't the uh, ferry do that? We have so many things that we could help the shipping, uh, wider shipping uh, community uh, uh, through these things. And uh, with that, the conclusion is this. The autonomous ships will both give the clever guys in the room some thoughts about how to expand business and go into new de uh, development of this shipping. So instead of being New York taxi afraid of the Uber, embrace it and come up with a new business model. And for the incumbents, you will benefit from these new technologies. Thank you.